first time. What just happened? Did you flip it? We just made it to Quartzsite for the first time, and uh, we stopped at this RV pit stop where you get, what is it, water, water you can dump. Water, propane, and dump station. It was $10, and they charge by the length of your RV, and of course, since our RV is so large, we paid the max. Yes, and so it, you don't have to pay to fill up your RV if you just want to bring like a five gallon water drug. Or if you have a water bladder. Right, it's, um, it's 25 cents a gallon or five, uh, five gallons for a dollar. Um, or if you, if you, if you those, get the RO water. The RO water, which yeah. is reverse osmosis for people that don't know what RO yep. stands for. But uh, we're, we're here, we're getting water, and then we're driving five miles down the road, and we're going to be finding our space. Yes, and meeting Jason and Jennifer. Yep. Yeah, so we're really close to that uh, RV pit stop. So if you're coming to Quartzsite, you've never been here, uh, this is a really good place to just kind of come in. Get all your fresh stuff. Get all your stuff ready. Get rid of the old stuff. Well, and so you don't have to travel with it, right? Like, right. you don't have to travel with full tank that, right. that far. Yep. You know, five miles isn't bad, but you don't want to go 100 miles. Yeah, so. that's for sure. Not with 130 gallons of And then there's also three, there's three uh, RV parks right here yeah. also. I think there's a fourth right across the street. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I don't know how much it costs to stay there or how booked in advance they are, but... Uh, that's a good option for you too if you want full hookups before like a night before you go boondocking right yeah perfect uh but it was much nicer being able to travel empty <laughs> yes <laughs> it definitely did a lot better because we passed we did some mountain passes that were uh pretty big yeah good climbs yep yeah. all right uh, all right well, well all right. i'm just waiting for water to fill up and then we'll be on our way are we gonna let it fill all the way up or are you gonna uh, i'm gonna let it fill it all the way We're here. We, we made are, it. We made it. We are parked in Quartzsite. We are here with Jason and Jennifer from No Sticks, No Bricks. They're right over there cooking some dinner. Thanks, guys. They're cooking his hamburgers and hot dogs. Yes. Uh, this Yummy is, stuff. This is awesome. It is great. So it's Even the, Luna's enjoying it. Yeah. It's the night before. We're getting ready to do our big system install. And we've already gotten everything out, out and uh, ready to go. So in the morning, we're going to kick it off. But... Just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what Quartzsite looks like. If you haven't been here, this is our first time. Uh, we were able to find a big space where we could actually park uh, door to door and just make like a common campground area in the middle. Yeah, it'd be really cool if we had a bunch of rigs like in a circle over right? here. Like this is a perfect spot. Yeah, it definitely is. The sun is setting. It's just, it's, it's really nice out here. <laughs> so uh, we're going to uh, go eat some dinner, but in the morning we're going to kick off with um, opening some boxes and getting into some goodies. So, should be fun. Pray for us. <laughs> Before we even get started, I want to say thank you so much to our partners, Battleborn Batteries, uh, for providing us this stuff and for the partnership and everything else that you've done for us uh, so far. And we are so excited about the, uh, the partnership to come. Today we are installing our system. We are going to get started by just kind of mounting everything, get a feel for how everything's going to go. We're going to walk you through this process. However, disclaimer here, this is not a how-to video. There are plenty of other resources online if you are looking for a step-by-step -step, uh, how-to video in order in order to install some of this stuff. So just wanted to get that out there. Also, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing if you get some value out of this video. Uh, we have uh, lots of adventures to come, so we're, we're happy you're here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and just kind of place everything. We got to get the bay kind of torn out and, and all that other good stuff. Again. So let's, let's get going. We're probably taking this thing apart now. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be moving a few of the things that are already on the wall. And that's just to make room for the new components. 
So this right here is not even gonna be used in the new system because that is going to my current inverter and we're not gonna be using that. What I have to do is actually move this over and just kind of temporarily mount it because we're gonna leave the batteries and everything connected until the last step. What we didn't plan on is that it's gonna be 100 degrees out here <laughs> today and tomorrow. So we are gonna leave this system up and running for as long as we possibly can. And then at the end, we're gonna just connect all the wiring, but we're gonna get all, everything run uh, before that. So I need to move that. And then there's one more box up at the top that I'm gonna be moving over just to make room for the components. And it looks like there's plenty of wiring. We are in fact, just under the nose cap uh, of our fifth wheel. And that is where my generator and my batteries are currently housed. So that's where all of the new stuff is going to go. So this whole, this whole wall right here is nothing but wood anyways. All right, that's up out of the way. Okay, now before we go any further, it dawned on me, I haven't even told you exactly what we're getting yet or what we got. So working with Battleborn, uh, we have a couple of different things here. We actually have a really nice system that's going into the RV. We're gonna start with two MultiPlus uh, inverter converters. So we didn't do the MultiPlus two because we're gonna run one on each leg of power for our 50 amp RV. We have our solar charger because panels will be going up top. Not today, but panels, we're gonna run everything, make sure it's ready for the panels to be installed. And uh, we got the smart shunts, which just gives you the ability to kind of manage and and, re, uh, and track and, and just monitor stuff on your system. We also have a Lynx distributor. Now, if you're familiar with how these things go in, uh, typically, you may use like a bus bar of sorts to run from your battery to your um, to your different components. However, this Lynx distributor is actually a really fancy bus bar and all the fuses go in it. Uh, so we'll be using that and that's what all our, will power all of our components off of the batteries. They give us three easy starts for our ACs. So we will be installing them at some point. And then the heart, the power we have two Game Changer 3.0s. Those are rated at 270 amps a piece, 300 continuous, together 600 amps of battery power. So <laughs> really excited to be installing this system today. Now I will point out that's not all of the components. There's a whole tote of stuff here that we need to actually make this system work. You know, they gave us the big components, but we had to get all the wiring and everything. And with the way the prices are right now, it costs about $1,200 for all this stuff and hoping we got everything we needed. So I did want to point that out. Like, yes, Battleborn gave us some really awesome components to go in here, but we did have to invest ourselves as well. But we are super excited to get this system in. We're out here boondocking in Quartzsite. So what better place to have a new system put in? First of all, I know I look ridiculous. Don't worry about my fashion accessory. Anyways, uh, what I'm doing right now is the Multi Plus 2s come with this uh, bracket that goes on the wall first. It makes it a lot easier to install. So you mount these brackets and then it just hangs on this. And then you can screw it in through the bottom. So what we're doing is we're mounting the brackets right now and then we're going to kind of dry fit them, make sure the brackets are in a good spot. And then we're going to um, take them back out and start running some wiring. I would help you, but I don't think I can get in there to help you. <laughs> Udemus. Sweet. All right, we got both mounts in the wall now and time to put the big boys, the twins, into uh, their final resting place. So we are going to take the MultiPlus uh, inverters, move them in there. The reason we're doing that now is because that will give us a good idea of how long we need to make the wires. Out here, we're just kind of guessing. So go in there and then we'll do all the wiring in there. These front cases actually just come off. So we'll be taking those off once we get them mounted in there. And, uh, and then we can do all the wiring that we need. All right, 
so what we're doing first, now that we have the inverters mounted, inverter converter, now that we have those mounted, we're going to run the AC lines because that's what we have to do the most of in this bay. So we're gonna run those, but we're not gonna actually like hook them up until the last minute so that we can cut power to everything. Uh, and then that way we will also be able to get in the front bay and just do everything we need to do in there because the most of the wiring, all the DC wiring is in the front bay and the AC wiring is in here. So next thing we have to do is we have to run uh, two lines from our transfer switch into the inverters because that's going to tell the inverters whether or not we have generator power or shore power and it lets it know which one to pass through. The transfer switch actually does that and the transfer switch is pushing it to the inverter converter and then that's providing power back to our fuse panel over here. So got to have everything run through those new multi plus. All right, first AC wire has been run to the uh, the first inverter. So we uh, we got a little ways to go, but it's definitely coming along. And uh, you know we're trying to conserve as much wire as possible too. Um, that was fun though, trying to figure out exactly how this wiring goes in there into the little clamps that come on the bottom of the uh, multi plus. That was pretty fun. <laughs> I haven't watched any videos. I've, I've watched a ton of research and I haven't seen any videos that show exactly how to do that, but we got it. We're gonna go ahead and run the rest of the AC wiring and just run them to length or put them in the inverters, run the links, give them, give them a little snip and then uh, move on to the next one. Cause again, we're not, we're gonna do all the actual like live power stuff at the end so that we have minimized the amount of time that the RV doesn't have power. But it's, it's coming along. So once we're done running these things, I think we can start on DC and that's where we got to do all the crimping and the shrink wrap and all that other crap. So it's going to take a little while. We're actually using 6.3 is uh, the size wiring we're using for the AC side. All right, now that we have the AC wires run, the ones that are going to go to the fuse panel, what we want to do is continuity check just in case, because you know, they're they're turning, twisting and everything to get in there. And so we want to make sure it's uh, good continuity between the two ends of the wiring. So I have a multimeter here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold this against one of the wires. My trusted colleague here is going to uh, hold it against the other end of that wire and we're gonna make sure that we get a very low resistance reading. Correct. All right, cool. So let's see, oh, we gotta come a little closer. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go black. Black. You boom. Good. Yep, we're good. Uh, white. Yep, we're good. And green. We're good. All right. So we got good wiring all the way around. So next thing we need to do is run some wiring for the transfer switch to the uh, inverters. Since we already have our cables run to the circuit breaker, we're at link for the circuit breaker. So that's where our AC lines are going to run. So we got two lines that are going to come right here and go to the back of the circuit breaker panel. It's one line for each leg. And then we have this extra line. The third and fourth are gonna to go to that transfer box right there. And what that's gonna do is that's going to, when we're either on shore or generator, it's gonna tell the inverters, uh, you know, which one is feeding power. It's going to flip between the two and actually send power to the inverters. So we have to run two lines to that. All in all, you got four AC lines. All four AC wires are now run and connected. We performed continuity tests on all four of them. Three wires each and all is good. So now I'm gonna cut this thing the length and I think we're gonna start working on DC stuff. We gotta mount some other stuff in, uh, in the front, the links distributor, the solar charger and figure out where the batteries are gonna go. But uh, moving right along. You ready? Ooh. All right, so this is the Lynx distributor here. It's basically a really fancy bus bar. So you can put fuses in your line. And then 
we have the solar charger that's gonna be connected to all those cool panels that are going on the roof at some point uh, that will not be today but we are connecting the, the we're going ahead and run the dc power for the smart uh char solar charger to the links distributor we're just going to keep the fuse out of the line that way it doesn't turn on um and just be sitting there with no no juice running to it so but we're going to get everything run as much as possible i'm going to get it kind of tight and then make sure it's on the wire good now for the fun part of actually uh crimping all these dc Ooh. wires build just building wires so we're going to be doing that for a little bit and then uh then we're going to be starting installing these things But I think this hydraulic thing is probably... This thing's slick. That's for sure. We didn't even have... I don't think ours... The one way I had it work was this fancy. We good? Good. $15. We are moving. We got the DCs connected to both uh, of the inverter converters, the MultiPlus. And now we got our cables run for our solar charger. And we've got our fuse put in line up top. We've got our smart shunt uh, put in, in there. All we got to do is tighten those bad boys up. And the last thing to do is once we take these batteries out is to take these cables right here that are actually used to start the generator and move them up to there once they're uh once it's all hooked up and we can take these batteries out and put the new big boys in okay one thing i didn't add when we we're doing installing batteries these are going into the generator bay if you've ever seen the floor of the generator bay it's not very solid and so it's going to flex under these these are 80 pounds a piece so if we just lay them in there they're going to it's going to flex so what we did is we actually bought these it's an l um, like channel and then we're going to uh what we did is modify the feet right here so that this can go right like that and the batteries will actually sit on this channel on the front and back this will go across the floor so it will sit on frame to frame which is pretty awesome that means the batteries will have good solid support uh for the weight these feet have been cut off they they started as like an l and they came around here, but because of this, it wasn't able to uh, have this go on the track. So now we can actually put a track on these that will go across and that will be the bracing for the floor because we have bolts that are gonna go through the ends of these and bolt them to the floor. And where the length of these, there's actually like a little frame that these will sit on. So that will give plenty of support for these big old batteries. The last thing we're gonna to do today is actually install the batteries to the current system. So it's like we're just replacing batteries. And what that will do is that will allow us to uh, run the generator when we need to, or actually the generator won't run as much. And we'll be able to do a lot more stuff in the camper without having to waste the gas for the generator. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna get these bad boys mounted in place, get them wired up to today's wiring, the way it's in there right now on those batteries, use these tonight and then tomorrow early when it's cool switch everything over uh, so that we can cut the power so that's the last thing we're doing today this is going to be wrap up of day one day two coming very soon